So we've got a lot of questions about soil, soil health, plant feed, sure, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Um, you always talk about feeding your soil. What do you mean by that? Um, yeah, so that's... Um, I suppose I should clarify that I try and grow um, as organically and as sustainably as possible, I guess. So I'm not certified organic, but um, uh, I'm, the organic mantra is feed the soil, not the plant. Okay, <laughs> so what, what, that, what that means really is that your, 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 your soil is full of life. OK, so so we've got like um, beneficial bacteria, amoeba, protozoa, nematodes, lots of creepy crawlies, worms, beetles, all sorts of stuff. And they all live in your soil. When we feed them, we might be feeding them with cow manure or whatever it might be. Uh, they are eating that, processing it, uh, digesting it, excreting it then. And it's their uh, poo, I suppose, um, that uh, provides the main plant nutrients in a form that's available to plants. Okay. So like your tomato plant can't sort of technically eat horse manure, but it feeds on the nutrients produced by all the soil life uh, that does that job for it. Does, okay, that, so, does that make so sense? So all the little creatures are sort of doing the processing for us. Yeah, exactly. Pets. That's like your little okay. fertilizer factory, okay. essentially. Okay. <laughs> Millions of little pets. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, 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 that, and that's kind of how it works. So um, I mentioned cow manure. Like, uh, um, you, you're also looking at what, what, what types of stuff that I would be yeah. using, I, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so, so in, in, in the autumn, I would put on a lot of um, homemade compost. So that would be any plant waste or kitchen scraps, uh, all composted down into compost. Okay. As I said, I use an organic cow manure. I'm really lucky. I have a friend down the road who's an organic beef farmer. Hi, Clive. Better hi, Clive. Hi. Yeah, if you're watching. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I live near the sea as well, so I would use seaweed. Um, uh, I would use uh, a little bit of wood chip as well. Uh, now, it's important that that is kind of broken down before you're putting it on the garden or applied to the soil surface, but that's, that's okay. another day's work. <laughs> but essentially, you're adding bulky organic material. And when okay. I say organic, I don't mean like certified organic. I mean that it was once alive. So like grass clippings, any of any of that stuff is going to break down as it would naturally in nature into a, a, a compost um, that feeds your soil. OK, and so you're putting a layer. How thick of a layer roughly? Are you putting? I Just... put about five centimeters okay. on the whole garden, pretty much. OK. And, you know, it's a bit different from if you're using a specific plant feed. Yeah. The whole point is if you just feed the soil all the time with good organic matter, you don't need to worry about what plants goes where and what, you know, that you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're using certain nutrients for a certain plant. Just feed all your soil and then over time, your soil will become more fertile. It'll be better able to hold on to moisture, but also will drain better. So you're just building a really wonderful growing medium for your plants by doing that. Okay, and so you're building your soil all the time. Let, let's just say we're not quite at the level that you're at yet. We're still, we're still working okay. on building our soil. We need to feed <laughs> our plants. That, I'm not at that high level, but anyway. Yeah. Um, so like better there's gardeners tons of than me. plant feeds out there. Like what would you what would you recommend? Or say for someone who's growing in a container or something. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very good point. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then also, like when I started off growing here, my soil was in terrible state. Okay. I mean, we do, I, it's not a very fertile part of the country where I live, <laughs> and the soil in my garden was pretty awful. So I did have to build it up. So in the beginning, yes, if you are a new gardener and you haven't got a really fertile soil, building up with the organic matter, it does take years to build up this really good, deep, um, fertile soil. So you may need supplementary feeds. So I would always try and go something for something which is a little bit more natural. So a big one I would use would be a seaweed and poultry manure pellet. Um, I think we have there's we do, here, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be, do you want to go and look? Yeah, at, let's, let's. Okay. Let's have a look at. Just go and have see. a look at those. We didn't set this up before. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> um, yeah, so I would go for yeah something more natural. So seaweed and poultry manure is a really good one. Okay, um, and that's so, a sl slow release. It's going to be slow release. Yeah, any of any of your more natural products are going to be slow release because, as we said, um, all your soil life needs to process it. 
So that's a really good thing in that um, like this is going to feed for maybe three months or so. Um, and then we should probably we should probably just talk quickly about NPK. Yes. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> so <laughs> when you look at when you look at bottles or boxes of plant feed, it has three letters with a number beside. So you have NPK and that's nitrogen phosphorus and potassium is k confusingly <laughs> um and they're the they're the three major plant nutrients and they would be for specific things okay. so nitrogen is um good for green leafy growth so like a cabbage cabbages or something yeah yeah okay. yeah but i mean anything obviously yeah. is going to need some nitrogen yeah. but like if if you if you if you yeah your big leafy crops yeah okay. as, as you say like cabbages leads not lots of nitrogen Phosphorus then is good for root growth. So um, obviously for your carrots or parsnips or something like that. Okay. It's also good if you're planting out, um, uh, say, um, uh, uh, bare root fruit or something or shrubs, or or shrubs that type of stuff, because it, 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 it's good for some initial root growth to get them started. Okay. And then um, your potassium then uh, is for flowers and fruit. So a tomato feed is going to be high in potassium. So you get loads of lovely uh, tomatoes. Okay. Now, <laughs> the reason I'm mentioning that now is that in your natural feeds like this, which is a slow release, it has, uh, it's not very, maybe well written oh, yeah, here. I can see it. I wouldn't mind, but I designed the logo. <laughs> but so we've got, we've got, we've got an NPK of 411.5, right? Um, now that seems quite low, but it can be misleading on a natural pr product because legally uh, your NPK numbers just refer to immediately available nutrients. But as we've said, these are slow release. So um, that might be the amount that's immediately available, but then the actual amount of nitrogen that it has is going to be a lot more, but over a longer period. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yeah. okay, that makes sense. Um, but in general, I would try and go, if you need to use a supplementary feed, I would use, get as close as you can to something that's going to feed the soil. And the poultry manure is, it's still adding some organic matter uh, and um, uh, it's still uh, in a form that your soil life is going to enjoy. Okay. <laughs> um, I suppose then, if you if you wanted a little bit of extra phosphorus, then um, a natural boost. Yeah. Hey, yeah. If you're looking for something to like more natural. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can just buy phosphorus, but blood, fish, and bone, or 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 just bone meal on its own okay. is good. Um, um, now that's obviously a byproduct of the meat processing industry. So whether you agree with that or not, that's your um, uh, decision. But as a natural product, this is a good one. And again, it's going to be slow release. Okay. So I'd recommend that. And then um, comfrey then, which is a really easy plant to grow in your garden. Really, I suppose yeah. any vegetable garden should grow some comfrey, but be careful, it does tend to take over. Um, uh, it's a it's a good source of potassium. So you can buy comfrey pellets. Um, we sell them, obviously. You can get those in many, many places, I suppose. That's a good one. Um, and then also, if you have, um, say, uh, an open fire at home uh, or a stove and you might yeah. burn uh, logs, wood, um, then um, the ash is a good source of potassium. So um, you'll often see potassium referred to as potash, and that's the reason for that, okay. is that it comes from ash. Now, not coal or or or, or turf, uh, wood ash really is, is what you need for that. Okay. And then, and I'm kind of going back on myself, I do use sometimes, if I have to, I would use a liquid feed. Now, this... I like because it's a uh, fermented seaweed product, so it's a really good plant tonic. And um, uh, there are um, sugars in the seaweed that do stimulate, stimulate the plant's immune system, and it also is helpful for your soil life. Now, it does have added potassium, um, which is going to be an artificial potassium, but I suppose it's a small amount. Rare enough I would use this. Okay. But I'm mentioning it specifically and tomatoes feed specifically because so many people are growing tomatoes in containers or pots or grow bags, which would have a very limited amount of space uh, for the roots to take up nutrients. So we kind of need to give them a boost. Okay. So I think a lot of people 
Um, if, if, unless you're growing in a, in a really nice big bed full of very fertile soil, you're going to have to supplement your tomatoes. Awesome. All I'm saying is try and get the, a better one um, rather than just your standard tomato feed. One with seaweed actually is very good and there's a lot of them on the market. Um, but uh, yeah, they would be good. That, that would be my, my kind of um, exception, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and so overall, the more that we feed our soil, the less we're going to need any plant feed. Precisely. Okay. Precisely. I would very rarely, if ever, feed anything else. Um, but, um, and maybe we'll do another video on this. The other important thing is to get to know, by looking at a plant, what it needs. Because there's no point in applying feed. I mean, so you, you might say, oh yeah, you'll see in a lot of bottles, just apply every two weeks. Yeah. But if the plant doesn't need it, it's just being wasted and okay. can run off into the, into, into the leach, into the soil. Because uh, a lot of your your soluble feeds, especially your artificial feeds, they contain a lot of salts, which are very soluble, and that can then get down into water courses. So, as gardeners, we need to be quite responsible with feeds. Because we, would you believe, right? Everybody always goes on about um, agriculture u using um, uh, too much fertilizer on the land, but yeah. farmers are trying to make money, so they're trying to use the the least possible. Whereas gardeners use 10 times more fertilizer than no a farmer way. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. on average so only use it when you need it okay so and you can do that by checking i'm not going to go into it now because we're going to be here all day but we'll do another little video on that perfect thank you okay okay